Hello everyone, welcome back for another lesson. We will begin the chapter or the section on electricity. So for this lesson, I will go over the basics of electricity. So I'll give you a few definitions and um, talk about basic concepts. So let's begin. First, what is electricity? Well, it's anything related to electric charges. So any phenomena caused by electric charges, whether they are positive or negative. So we're talking here about protons and electrons, right? Now, what do we know about electric charges? So there's a set of laws that uh, were determined based on experimentation. So we know now that similar charges tend to repel each other. So two protons would repel or two electrons would repel. So two positives or two negatives will repel. We know that opposite charges will attract each other. So a positive and a negative would attract each other. We also know that neutral objects can be attracted by charged objects. Okay, and we'll talk about static electricity in the next lesson. So I will, I will talk about that a bit more. So a neutral object can be attracted by something that carries a charge. Lastly, attractive forces will depend on distance. So the closer the two objects are, the more of a force there will be between the two objects, whether it's a force that is repelling them or a force that is attracting them. Next, if we look at an object such as this one, we can determine if the object is positively charged, negatively charged, or neutral. So we will say that an object is neutral if the number of protons and, and electrons, sorry, are equal. So if I have as many positive charges as I have negative charges, the object will be neutral. Now, if, let's say my object looked like this, well, I could say that there's a surplus of electrons. So if there's a surplus of electrons, the object will be called or will be um, qualified as negative. Now, it would be called positive or positively charged if the object has a deficit of electrons. So let's say something like this. So where I have less electrons than protons or less negative charges than positive charges, this would be called a positively charged object. So it has a deficit of electrons. Okay, so neutral, the charges are equal. Negative, there's a surplus of electrons. Positive, there's a deficit of electrons. So you can see that electricity revolves around the electrons much more than the protons. The protons play a role, but we know they're stuck in the nucleus. They cannot move. As opposed to the electrons, they can move. So that's why we tend to focus a little, a little bit more on them because they can move and sometimes they can jump from one object to, to another and that will create either um, a surplus of electrons or a deficit of electrons in a given substance. Now, charges are very tiny. So in order to count them, we need to kind of group them a little bit like with atoms. We were talking about Avogadro's number because atoms are so small that we needed to group them together um, in a unit called a mole. So there's a similar situation with electricity. There is a unit and a variable called a coulomb. So the variable coulomb is represented by the letter Q, lowercase q. And the unit is also called coulomb, unfortunately, because it becomes confusing. But C is the symbol for the unit. So Q is the symbol for the variable and C is the symbol for the unit, but they're both called Coulomb. Okay, so it's a unit of measurement for electrical charges. So in one Coulomb, there is 6.25 times 10 to the 18 either electrons or protons, depending on the situation that we're looking at. Now, what is the charge of one particle when to find that? We're going to take one group of particles, so one coulomb, divided by the number of particles it represents to basically bring it down to one particle. So one particle has a charge of 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19. So you may come across that number at some point. All it means is that it's the charge of one electron or one proton. But normally the number that we're going to be working with the most is the number of actual electrons or protons within a coulomb. So 6.25 times 10 to the 18 charged particles per coulomb. And again, Q is the variable and C is the unit.
Now, if we look at what conducts, what doesn't conduct electricity, we have three categories. Before I get into this, let's take a look at the periodic table. So we recall that on the left-hand side, we have the metals. Here we have the transition metals, but there's still metals. Here we have the non-metals, and somewhere in between over here, we have the metalloids or semi-metals. So if we look at the atomic numbers, which represent a number of protons within each atom, we know that within a period, the number of protons will increase. Why am I telling you this? Because metals have, in general, less protons than their counterparts in the same period, the non-metals. So the electrons over here are not as attracted as much to the nucleus. They're held more loosely because there are less protons to attract them. The non-metals have more protons for in any given period. And because of that, the electrons are held much more tightly. They can't move around very easily. And that's why metals are the type of substances that will conduct electricity because the electrons are held very loosely. So what happens in a metal is that the electrons at the surface will be prompted to move. I'm going to talk about that later on when we talk about circuits. But at some point, they're prompted to move. And because they're all of the same charge, they will repel each other. So they're pushing each other around. And it's this movement of electrons that causes electricity to flow, whether we're talking about an electrical circuit or we're talking about static electricity. Okay, so it works the same way. Electrons will repel each other, forcing movement, and that will basically create the energy that we call electricity. So they all move in the same direction. As I said, they repel each other and they can pass from one atom to the, to the other because of their weak nuclei attraction. Why do they have a weak nuclei attraction? Because they have less protons than the nonmetals. Okay, so metals are conductors. Then we have insulators. Insulators are the opposite. They're basically the nonmetals. So they hold on to their electrons very strongly. The electrons can, cannot move and current cannot flow. So substances that don't conduct electricity, we will call them insulators. So nonmetals tend to be insulators. More specific examples would be glass, rubber, wood, plastic, and so on and so forth. Then we have the semiconductors, which are semi-metals basically. So those have variable conductivity because we know that semi-metals are act a little bit like metals and a little bit like non-metals. So they're not as good conductors as metals, but they're not total insulators like non-metals. They're somewhere in between. So because of that variable conductivity, we can use them in electronics. We can kind of control better the way they conduct electricity. They don't, they're not like metals where they superconduct and they're not like non-metals where they're total insulators because they're somewhere in between. We can kind of harvest that quality, use that quality, and we use that in electronics amongst other, um, other gadgets. Um, carbon and silicon would be the two most common metalloids that are used in semiconductors. Lastly, when we talk about um, charged particles, they have an electric field, and this has been observed, and I will show you uh, what it can look like when we talk about in the next lesson, uh, when we talk about static electricity, but uh, we can actually observe the, the electric field. Now, by convention, it was decided that the electric field coming, uh, or well, yeah, it was coming out of a proton, so it's going outwards, but for an electron, it's going inwards. Okay, so the electric field is coming out of a proton, but going into an electron. So when they are put next to each other, we know that there is an attraction between the proton and the electron, or the positive and the negative charge. Because the field is coming out of the, the positive charge and going into the negative one, it'll look like this, right? The arrows would be pointing in the direction of the electron, and the field actually can be curvy like this. And there would be lines of field coming, let's say this here could be completed around there. Now, if we have two particles that are the same, such as two protons, well, both fields are coming out of the particles. So the fields will be going outwards, but there's going to be an area in the center here that will be empty because both fields are repelling each other. They're trying to both push the other one away. So we have kind of a, a dead zone over here. 
Okay, so this is how the field would look like around two protons. If we, if we have two charged plates, the field would look like this. So we'll have, let's say, a positive plate and a negative plate. So there's electro these could be electrodes, for example. Um, so the electricity or the charges uh, would flow from positive to negative, right? As, as determined over here, the, the field goes from positive to negative. So the field here will go from positive to negative. So I'm talking here about the electric, the electric field. Um, so it'll go from positive to negative in straight lines or around the edges as curvy lines. Now, there's two things that you have to know about these representations. And obviously, these representations are based on reality. So if we uh, put many lines, it means that the field is very strong. If there are fewer lines, the field is weaker. And those lines should never cross. And again, when I show you an example of what it looks like in reality when we use um, iron filings, for example, so little pieces of iron that we, we sprinkle above plates like this, we actually see the lines of the field. So in a subsequent uh, lesson, I'm going to show you an image of that. So we know that this is true because we've actually observed it. So again, the more lines, the stronger the field, the less lines, the, the, the weaker the field, and those lines should never cross when we represent uh, a field, an electric field. So that's it for the general info regarding electricity. In the next lesson, we'll tackle uh, static electricity. Um, if you have questions in the meantime, don't be shy and ask, and otherwise I'll see you for your next lesson, and until then, take care!